Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. We're almost a week removed from Andy Ruiz Jr.'s stunning upset over Anthony Joshua, claiming three major titles in the process, and I highlight three there. The IBO is not a major title, even though a number of people keep trying to convince me that it is. But Ruiz Jr., a stunning upset, and the news continues to flow thick and fast through the media, social media, from the newsmakers themselves and also division rivals, promoters, it's all over the place. People are still going crazy for this win from Andy Ruiz Jr. And obviously the fallout, people are dissecting things and trying to work out what went wrong. Does Joshua have what it takes to come back? And I'm not going to try to cover all the developments that are floating around in the ether at the moment because it's just too much. And we're almost a week removed from the fight and some of it becomes a little bit of a drag after a while because, you know, how many times can you go over the same things? But talking about a rematch, and we're going to get into this first, Manny Robles comments, that's Andy Ruiz Jr.'s trainer, and then onto a few other things. So buckle in, let's go. But the rematch, Andy Ruiz Jr.'s trainer, Manny Robles, says... You have to prepare for the best without overconfidence. You have to get to work and keep learning, improve in boxing, evaluate the first fight, see what we did wrong, what we did right, and what we did well to improve on. Nothing more. It will be an explosive rematch. And on the basis of the first fight, well, we know Andy Ruiz Jr. is going to come to win. And actually, I did a quick poll on my Twitter, a flash poll, not a huge sample, 150 votes. But um, I was a little surprised that still two-thirds of all people expect uh, Anthony Joshua to take that one out. I thought maybe the pendulum would swing a bit more towards Ruiz, that it'd be a bit more even. But 50% of people, and you can see here on screen, predict that Anthony Joshua will get the KO. And then obviously another chunk of people think he'll get a decision. Only 3% going for Andy Ruiz by decision. 29% believe he could get the KO in the fight. Interesting indeed. But um, Robles is right. Ruiz, he will have to prepare hard because Anthony Joshua, I think many of us would expect after that first performance, the first effort, that he will come back with some hunger, some desire, that he probably will be a better version of himself. And if he's seemingly, what from what people have said, more switched on, then he could be more of a handful. And ahead of the first fight, Andy Ruiz Jr. had made quite a bit in the media that he thought his optimal weight was about 245, and that if he could get down to that number, that no one in the, in the world would be able to hang with him. So it remains to be seen what they will do in this rematch, which will happen at some time in 2019 at the back end of the year. But uh, will he decide to, to come in a bit lighter? It, you know, it's hard to say because he was 268 pounds for the first fight, said he wanted to come in heavier so he had a bit more mustard on his shots. Ultimately, that did pay dividends in the end, getting Anthony Joshua out of there in the seventh round, four knockdowns in total. I guess the question, you know, what is an optimal weight for Andy Ruiz Jr.? That was his highest weight for a number of years, I think since 2014. And prior to that, he'd, you know, sort of been around 255, 260-ish, somewhere around there. What do you make of that situation? What should he do differently for the second fight? Does he need to do anything differently for the second fight? Or can he rely on his fast hands, quick combinations and counterpunching? All big factors in the first fight as well as some of the body punching later in that fight. In terms of Frank Warren, he has been sort of weighed in saying that the heavyweight landscape, it actually hasn't changed at all after Andy Ruiz Jr.'s win. He said Andy is game and he's got fast hands, but has he the beating of Tyson Fury? I don't think he has, and I'm not sure he has the beating of Wilder. Certainly this has been a, a point of debate among fans after this win. Andy Ruiz Jr. beats Anthony Joshua. What could he do to Wilder and Fury? Well, we haven't found out. I don't think anyone can definitively say for sure, even Frank Warren. And remember, Tyson Fury's got a fight coming up, so uh, Fury and Warren are in the media at the moment saying all manner of things, and that's, you know, indirect promotion for that up upcoming fight in just over a week's time on June 15. So moving on, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., he says of this win by Andy Ruiz Jr., it was something historic for us Mexican. We feel very proud. I personally did not think he was going to win, but when I saw that he held his own in the first round 
and then the second, and then he hurt him. I said, there is a chance. And the truth is, this is very exciting. He's chubby, chubby, but what a chin he has. That's a compliment from Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., even though some of it doesn't really sound like a compliment. He was doubting Ruiz. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and Canelo Alvarez, both of them have actually come out supporting Andy Ruiz Jr. and congratulating him on his win. And a guy who did actually offer an olive branch out to Anthony Joshua immediately in the wake of this first fight was Tyson Fury, who you may recall said Joshua can come again. Very complimentary, uh, very thoughtful comments in the immediate wake of the fight. But it didn't take long for Tyson Fury to do his bait and switch routine. And he's blasted Anthony Joshua saying, unfortunately for AJ, it was the little fat fella from California who chinned him. He'll never live it down. Can you imagine? You're built like an Adonis. You're six foot six inches ripped carved in stone and a little fat guy who's ate every Snickers and Mars bar in California comes in there and bladders you all over. What a disgrace. If that was me, I'd never show my face in public again. Not exactly uh, too complimentary. There is Tyson Fury, one for Anthony Joshua, but two, it does talk down Andy Ruiz Jr.'s win over Joshua, saying that Joshua should have beaten him and the fact that he didn't is an embarrassment. And I think that does serve to take credit away from Andy Ruiz Jr., which is something I don't think we should be looking to do at this point. He's sort of weighed in on a couple of fronts you may have seen in recent days. So I'll start with the one thing, the comment from his YouTube channel. He's sort of thrown out there that he believes Anthony Joshua, had, some of his performance was down to not being able to get a therapeutic use exemption in America. He says, it's because you're in America, the VADA, uh, Voluntary Anti-Doping Agency, testing and you're not on the juice. That's why it's harder to get therapeutic use exemptions in America than the UK that's why but a a spokesperson for joshua told the mirror anthony is one of the most tested athletes in sport and has been vada and uk tested in the uk for all of his fights he was as he was tested as much in the states as he has been in the uk for every fight and in a column that white has penned for talk sport he makes a number of comments about this uh, fight and you may have seen some of those similar sort of sentiment on his uh, youtube video delving into the issue of the performance by joshua and he does dissect it in depth but in this article that he's penned it for talk sport he he says everyone has a bad day at the office but there was something more to it than that at the end of the fight he appeared relieved it was over he didn't look like he cared to me you don't go from being unified heavyweight champion 22 and 0 knocking everyone out saying you want to be undisputed champion to whatever that was when Vitaly Klitschko fought Lennox Lewis in 2003 and the fight got stopped due to a bad cut above the Ukrainian's eye, he was going crazy. There is more here sort of in that vein, but I'll skip past that going down to something else that White was saying. He says he may have also felt that he had to put on a show after Deontay Wilder's knockout victory over Dominic Brazil. AJ is that kind of guy who thinks, I want to do better than Wilder. I want to show I am the best. I want to be the people's champion. I saw it coming before the fight. I said he needs to focus on himself, forget what Wilder had done, and go out there and focus on getting the win against Ruiz. Don't put pressure on yourself and get the job done. Instead, he went out and tried to blast Ruiz. And the Mexican is one tough guy. He's one of those fighters who, the more you hit him, the more he gets into it because he's got nothing to lose. And he also wades in on whether Joshua should change trainer, saying, it's nothing to do with Rob McCracken. I know Rob. He's a good coach. He's one of the last of the old school coaches. He's been an AJ. He's been AJ's coach for a long time, and he got Carl Froch through some difficult fights. It's nothing to do with the coach. It's nothing to do with his promoter, Eddie Hearn. It was purely down to Joshua. And it was down to Joshua. He just wasn't good enough on the night. For whatever reason, If the, even if there was anything heading into the fight, Um, Andy Ruiz Jr. got the job done and we should now start looking towards the uh, the rematch Uh, some of the the storylines with that is going to be epic I mean where's it going to be it's going to be a pretty massive fight and I know there's been some conspiracy theorists who believe that Joshua threw the fight 
and I can't get on board with that at all. I just think that's a silly narrative. Uh, some people are saying it was done for money or whatever. I mean, I can't get on board with that. That just doesn't seem credible to me at all. To you know, go down with one of the biggest upset losses in history and have that on your resume, and you know, to deliberately throw a fight. I mean, that's a really that's quite a hard sort of claim to believe and stomach. I just don't think it would happen. And that really does take credit away from Ruiz, and he deserves all the plaudits that he's getting. And he is sort of, you know, moving on to, you know, he's on the scene at the moment doing all manner of interviews, uh, this post fight sort of glow that is sort of on his career at the moment. And here's a shot from Ruiz's Instagram. Uh, He was on Jimmy Kimmel, and we all saw the clip of him in the limo ahead of that. And this is uh, a shot from him with Kimmel on the show. There'll be this sort of glow for a while, but they're going to have to knuckle down at some point, probably in the next month or so, and really start preparing for this rematch, which will be, what, four or five months time or whatever it will be. What do you make of this? I know I'm getting a little bit fatigued with all the storylines, but some of it still does jump out at me and is interesting. Some of the comments that are coming out, but, you know, there comes a point where there has to be a cutoff and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I've pretty much had my fill of it now, but what about you? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.